Welcome to the Unfiltered Path Podcast, where we explore life's journeys without the constraints of filters. In a world saturated with highlight reels, we dive deep into the true essence of individual experiences, offering our listeners an uncentered glimpse into the triumphs, the struggles, and the transformative moments that define us. Our mission is to provide you hope, inspire resilience, and remind you that every path, no matter how windy or rocky, can lead to growth and enlightenment. Join us as we navigate the uncharted territories of truth to be moved, to be inspired, and to discover that you are not alone on this unfiltered journey of life. Hey, everyone. My name is Trinity Baker. I am one of your co-hosts here on the Unfiltered Path podcast. I am a mindset coach and motivational speaker. I help take my clients from survival mode to thrival mode, and I'm joined here with my beautiful co-host... Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle. I'm the owner of Ariel Jade. I'm an aerialist. That's a fancy term for performing suspended in the air. Essentially, I'm the bird of the circus. I also teach other people to do it too and provide performance opportunity and education throughout the state of Maine. And we are here with our handsome co-host. Good morning, everybody. My name is Graham Duval. I am the owner of Valued Productions. We provide video marketing strategies to help businesses become more successful, ultimately turning strangers into clients using video and social media. I'm super excited to be joined today by our awesome guest. Hey everyone, my name is Brianna Henward. I am Tinden Associates and I am an expert in all things health insurance and Medicare. What I do for people is I help them guide them through all the different health insurance and Medicare options, but I don't work for an insurance company. I'm your advocate and I help you to, um, understand your benefits and stay healthy with them. Love that. So you are truly there for your clients. You are not persuaded by a company or your own goals. It's just you as their advocate. I love that. I think that's very unique. It must Absolutely. be purpose-driven, I, I imagine. Oh, 100%. There's so many different insurance companies. And when you have a problem with them, like someone leaves a network, if you only have the insurance company talk to and you call them, their solution is always, oh, you should just stay with us and you should change your doctors and change your medications. When the answer is, just change insurance companies. There are other ones. I love that. I love that. You give them freedom and flexibility. And so we were just talking about how a lot of our listeners, not all of them, we appreciate every single listener here, but a lot of our listeners are either current business owners, entrepreneurs, or they have some entrepreneurial bones within them. And they're here listening for hope and inspiration that whatever that passion is that they want to follow eventually someday they do. And so we are talking about how we all know so many people who we wish that they would just take the leap because they have stuff that world needs. They have a voice that the world needs, passion that the world needs, services the world needs, but a lot of times they won't because we need security too of health insurance and retirement. So tell us a little bit about how you help those people understand that they don't need to allow their health insurance and retirement and all those benefits hold them back. A hundred percent. That is probably the most exciting calls I do is with the entrepreneur that is so ready to take their side hustle into a full-time job or they're working two full-time jobs, but they're keeping one just for the health insurance benefits because they don't understand how the Affordable Care Act or the in Maine, it's called CoverMe.gov works because you might go on it quickly and when you take a cursory grip glance and you don't put the numbers in right one you don't see the decrease of the cost goes in because it looks at your age and your income and if you look quickly it looks pretty brutal but it's it's actually very approachable and secondly it's kind to self-employed people because it's looking at net self-employment so you can take it's not your top line revenue right a gentleman once who was a contractor and so he was putting in the amount of money he was bringing in, I think it was $250,000. And so they were telling him, hey, you get no support whatsoever. But then we talked, like, you're only paying yourself 50. Like, that's not the same. And so he, it was like a $1,000 a month swing for him and his family. And so he was able to get health insurance. His wife was pregnant. And it was this amazing load off. And they're not going to tell you that because the, why would the health insurance company 
help with that. They're just making more money. So you just need to understand it. It's all about that knowledge gap. Um, and then you can be self-employed. Wow. <laughs> Love that. Fabulous. That was mind blowing. Tell us a little yeah. bit of like I can feel your passion. And I love entrepreneurs that have like this radiant passion about what they do. Why are you so passionate about this? Oh, so I got into the health insurance field um, originally. So my sister is 24 and she has cerebral palsy and autism. So she's very special needs. So she lives with us full time. I'm her caretaker. Absolutely adore her. And so when she turns 18, there was a kind of fall off of benefits. There's a lot of great organizations for disabled children, less for disabled young adults. So then two years later, she went on Medicare for the first time. And at that point, we lived together. And so I got to see her walk through this. We got to discover Medicare together, figure out what does it mean? How does Medicare, which is typically for 65-year-olds, look for a 20-year-old? And so I got really into that because I'd always loved disability rights. My mother had been doing the same thing for 17 years. And so I started doing this more on the side. Um, and while I worked my other job, and I discovered there's so much support working with other young families, other families um, with uh, disabled young adults and educating them. It's, it's life changing. Because when suddenly you're not concerned about going to the doctor. You're not concerned about all these different pieces because your health care is doing what it's supposed to do. Then you're more likely to go and get the physical therapy because you know the co-pays versus avoiding the physical therapy, avoiding all of these interventions, and then needing a surgery down the line. Mm -hmm. So it's been a huge impact on our lives. And so I love just talking to other families about it. Interesting. So beautiful. So beautiful. You're a great resource for many families, right? So not only like those entrepreneurs who are like, oh, I really am ready to take that leap. Brianna will help you. But also the families who are like, I am caring for a loved one with special needs. And I have no idea where to turn. I worked in the long-term care system for a long time. And you are right. Once you turn 18 one day, it's like a cliff comes and everything changes in the long-term care world. Everything. Um, so I love that you are a resource and you know that personally, because then you can, you know, the feeling that they're going through, not just the logistics of the the services, the co-pays, the finances, but it's a whole feeling. 100%. I think, I think a lot of that. Go ahead, Graham. I was just going to say, I think that's the biggest thing, like uh, when helping people and it's, it's cool to see someone like yourself in this type of role more than just like, you know, working a nine to five providing health insurance and Medicare. It's like, it's like essentially like coaching and like being a service provider within this realm of the health insurance and Medicare field. Um, because when people do like, the, like you said, Trinity, that feeling like, Oh my God, the stuff is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, what I mean? when you are experiencing big feelings, there is nothing better than having someone who is there saying, I know how it feels and mm -hmm. I'm going to help you, right? It's not, man, that sucks. Wish you weren't going through that. Here's how I think I can help you, right? Like there is just a total different feeling. And that's like, I love giving, that's why I love working with people who struggle with depression and anxiety and, and trauma and lack of self-worth because I've been there. I've struggled personally. I know it works. I know what I do works. Let me help you and normalize that in the meantime, because I've been there. Like we're all human. We're all dealing with, with stuff. Danielle, same thing with you, right? You, I'm sure you can look at someone who's brand new to a class that says, Danielle, I can't do that. And you're like, I know, I know how it feels. It's scary. It looks like it's 500 feet in there, but it's only five. And we'll lower it to three. <laughs> we'll help you take the next step. Like it, and I trusted you. I've, I've been there. I was there and I felt you, you, you made me feel okay for the feelings that I was feeling. So I love that. Yeah. You thought it was impossible for you to go upside down. I vividly remember. And I was like, well, you can do that today, but cool. We'll like 
figure this out. Um, (laughs) What I love um, too is, yeah, so I feel like you really identify with all of us. So, you know, Graham can take a look at somebody's media and marketing be like, hey, this is where we need to switch things up. Trinity looks at a crazy mind like mine and is like, we got to pivot this direction. You, you know, take some time to think whatever it is she can say. And I do physical side. I feel like what you offer is just you're like a coaching service. Um, uh almost like a like a mindset coach of, in certain ways um so that's really cool that you're there for the people it's because we know we serve community first so that's something that's like threaded in the three of us so it's nice when we meet other people that are threaded the same um within their workforce and what i love that stuck out before we started the podcast was that you used that entrepreneurs and people wanting to retire will commonly not because of healthcare. And that's just like Mm. what we all kind of look forward to is self-creating and chilling, (laughs) retiring, (laughs) enjoying life. And so the fact that healthcare has such a hold on us and it's just like informative sometimes, because I can give you like health tips, we can fix the mindset, but you know, that's only going to take someone so far um, so it's really cool that you can help transition people to in a more fulfilling life. Mm. I love that. And I had mentioned this before we started recording the episode is that it, I've seen so many people close to me, family members, close friends who wait and wait and wait to retire. And they wait another month and another week and another year, and then they retire and then they die. And I'm just like, what, where is the quality of life in this? Where is the quality of life? And there's so many people, if you look at them and say, well, I'm going to retire early, 50, 55, 40, whatever that number is. And they literally will laugh at you. So I stopped telling people my goal of retiring it by 50 because I'm sick of the laughs, but it's all about quality of life. And so Brianna, tell us a little bit about how you help people understand retirement. So there may be some people listening that are like, well, I don't want to work till I'm 65 and then die the next year. Like, I want to be able to actually enjoy traveling in my physical, able body. How can I retire early? How do you help people understand retirement? A million percent. We're waiting for this magic number of 65 that the government put on Medicare to retire. But there's two like flaws with that. One you're what we're in our we're younger we hope that 65 is still the number when we get there but we don't know especially at our age if it is and secondly it's individual health insurance so oftentimes what i see is my husband is four years younger than me so if i am the the working spouse um and i hit 65 and i want to retire but it's my health insurance Mm -hmm. my husband still can't go on it in front of the four years so I'll see gentlemen's or, or working wives go on Medicare or choose or want to go on Medicare at 65, not understand that there's the marketplace and it's actually a really viable option for people that are under 65. And then they'll be like, oh, I guess I have to work till I'm 70. I guess I have to work till I'm 75 because of this age gap. And it's really heartbreaking because th- they know what happens next is like you said, they then have a health emergency. And they're forced to retire, not because they want to and they want to spend time with their grandkids, but they're forced to retire due to health issues. And it's not the same retirement they dreamed. And it's just a really, it's just heartbreaking because then we mm. sit down and we look at the marketplace. So the subsidy, the, the amount that they decrease your premium on the health insurance marketplace is based on age and income. And I had a couple, they, one was 63 and one was 65. They were going to get a subsidy if, even if they made up to $300,000 a year. Because the closer you get to 65, the bigger cost saving they give you. So it's just about going in there and looking. But the second big thing that people will then pick COBRA and extend their health insurance through their employer, when COBRA, if anyone's ever been on COBRA health insurance, it is insanely unaffordable. So it's just about having knowledge. That's all I want is I'll, I'll talk to people all day long. Here's the information. And then let's pick the right path for you. Like, I love that. Brianna, where can people reach you? Where can they find information? Where can they get an appointment with you? Absolutely. They can go um, find me on Facebook, Brianna Henward uh, Medicare, 
or they can call me directly 207-691-1412. I always have my phone on me and it's just, again, it's typically, it's about five minutes of information to clear away the baggage. Yeah. And coming from like a mindset point of view, right? So here's how this will affect every area of your life. If you are worried about your insurance, if you're worried about your retirement, if you're worried about Medicare, you can't take the next steps. Like you just literally can't. You will always be in your head thinking about that one thing that's holding you back. And sometimes it's literally not even related to what you're holding yourself back from. But we have so much baggage in our head. If you don't get it out and talk to someone who is knowledgeable and can give you next steps to ease you, you can't even see the next steps of something like retirement or retiring early or nothing. So let Brianna take that worry from you and just give you some information, give you a roadmap so that you can actually step into your full, truest self in the next steps of your life. Yeah, yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. probably it can seem almost, I had a gentleman who's 58, he had a million dollars in the bank and he was still like, I don't think I can retire because you see the horror stories of the giant medical bills. It's like, man, you can get you health insurance. It's okay because a lot of times people think that their assets are going to be counted against them. No one looks at your assets for health insurance premiums. Mm. It's it's putting things in perspective. So as an entrepreneur with your own business, helping people with your passion, you had a, you had a life change. You became a mama. Tell us. I did. Tell us a little bit about how I get so happy about babies lately. So sorry. It's like a thing. I think I'm going through a phase. Okay. You're just happy about birth. (laughs) Your ovaries. It's okay. Tell us a little bit about how that transitioned your life, like in your entrepreneurial world. Oh, absolutely. I think I was very overconfident. I had one of five daughters. I was second of five. So I think I thought I did a lot of child taking care of as a kid. It's not the same as having your own. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was so confident. So my busy season starts in um, October 15th is open enrollment. My son was born September 6th. So I had six weeks of gearing up for my busiest season of the year. And I didn't plan well. I was so confident that it was going to be just fine. And my husband was amazing, super involved. Um, But I had this idea that I could do it all. I could be on a call and typing away my emails and have this baby. And he was just going to sit there and play and be quiet. (laughs) And none of that happened. And I was like trying to like call a client and Leo was like a minute you pick up the phone, some like antenna in their brain spikes out and then they interact with everything around them. And that's, that's, how, it, that's how it is with everything. When you go to eat, all of a sudden they're hungry. Bathroom, forget it. Oh yeah. Forget it. I still that's don't like, get to go pee alone. Even my cat comes in. <laughs> Sorry, oh, it's, okay. it's, it's like he just knows. He knows I'm doing something. Yes, he does. <laughs> oh, so that must have been so stressful. Like having this, I didn't have to overcome that. I was kind of like, had those type of things aligned. So yeah, we it, wanted to nurse. So I remember like driving, like I, I I got a bunch of opportunities in like New Hampshire last year. So I'd start my day off by driving three hours, going down the road with breast pumps on because I wanted to nurse. <laughs> like I'm like, is this like distracted driving? I don't think so, I but that. I don't know. And then do my appointments, drive three hours back because I didn't want to be gone overnight. But at the same time, I, I, I had a job to do and I had commitments. And I I think a lot, a lot of like, yes, oh. we want to build our business for ourselves, but we also want to build the business for our kids so they can see that and we can build a good life for them. So sometimes as a mom, it feels like it's a lose-lose. Like either I'm not with my kid I'm not building their future. And I think we need to get rid of that and just be like, you're doing great. You're doing what you need to do. Yeah. I I saw that story and please know, I will talk about you throughout the entire day of the breast pumping driving lady. Like, cause that's a new story. I haven't quite heard it said like that, but it is the ultimate story of what all of us understand is that level you just don't know until you're doing it. Graham, I can't wait for your day. I cannot <laughs> wait. I know you've, you're an, ama- you've an amazing stepfather, but I can't wait f- just to hear whatever that story is for you one day. <laughs> yeah. Because um, it's it's men too, you know? Oh, yeah. There's always that one story. Um, I remember mine. Um, 
I look up and my kid's dad is like half awake. We're all just exhausted. Second baby. He's trying to help out. He's doing his best. Not whatever. I look up and the guy was pouring the milk and there was no bottom to the the bottle. He was just so out of it. We were exhausted. You know what I mean? Like I had two, we had two toddlers at one point and he stayed, I let him stay at the house. I don't know. It was like six months of co like, like parenting together kind of thing. But I was really, I'm really grateful for that time to see it happen on the masculine end. Cause it's really not just female, but that just level of exhaustion. And like, I laughed so hard and it just woke us up because we were just in autopilot. Yeah. Like absolute utter autopilot. <laughs> and the bottom was just, yeah, no idea. <laughs> I love these stories because this is what I hope the Unfiltered Path podcast gives every single listener that is here listening to every episode is that we are all normal freaking humans and life happens to us. We go through everything that you do, plus, you know, all of our uniqueness. Um, but I want to go back to what Brianna just said, which is like, it feels like a lose-lose in many situations, especially as parents. And I know, Graham, you're going to relate to this not yet being a father is that sometimes it does feel like a lose lose and what Graham and I are going to talk about tonight is exactly that how do we create a win win how do we create a mm. life where it flows and we feel freaking good about what we're doing we're still doing our passionate work but we're also having family time we're having self care time we're having self love time we're having time off like going and meditating midday going and taking a walk midday like that it should be normal practice that we feel good about because then what happens is it it increases the quality of the work that we're doing when we're working right so right i love that i love you said get rid of the lose lose none of us should be living in a lose lose get rid of it and no. when and when we have the self awareness and someone to look at you and say okay right there lose lose let's switch it here's how we switch it i'm going to hold you accountable to that it's life changing and so i love that every single day for every single one of us should be a flow we should be waking up feeling good in a flow. We should be doing the things that we love. Now, I'm not saying we have to not do things that we don't love, but we can find the love in the things that we don't love to do. We can still find the purpose and the passion, right? Like, Graham, you know me. I really do not like social media at all. But you know what? <laughs> the reason I do it is because my messages pump me up. I know my messages literally inspire and motivate people. And the messages I get in return to my reels gives me more motivation to do it again tomorrow. And so personally, I would stay heck off social media if I didn't have a business, but I make the choice to put the effort into that is because I focus on what it's giving me and others. And so we can do that with those things that we don't love to do. And we can piggyback them. Like if I go and make some reels and I go and spend all this time on social media and I get like involved in it, I go and make sure I go take a walk outside to piggyback it with the thing we love that fills me up. So slow love your days. That's what we should be creating. Even as parents of one, two, 10 kids, as caregivers for our family, as we go through life's transitions, you know, new chapters come all the time. We can have flow in everything we do. Mm. I think that's why I started eating like food. I really love when I do my what? bookkeeping. Yeah. Like I started, I don't know why, <laughs> like the last few times, like I do quick, quick books for my phone. We all do that. But I'm talking about the, like, where am I making money? Like wh all that kind of conversation with your, your business. Right. I do that with Thai food like twice a month and yeah. it's my new thing. And I do it when I, the kids are like, you know, with my mom or whatever. So it's almost like I took the one thing that drives me freaking nuts. I can't stand having to deal with that side of life. And I made it like my, time like vibe time kind yeah. of like, well, that I I that. I had to but and you said that triggered me i didn't do it consciously i wasn't like hey i'm gonna make your this body did. your body did yeah yeah, yeah. when you, you said that, may like, not, like, you may not have done it consciously but your body knew exactly what you needed to do and so i love that celebrate your body because that is fucking epic love that um, that's what we need to do. But in order to even change these things, we got to realize what we're doing. What we don't absolutely love. Like you have to have the self awareness of like, Oh, you know what? This test makes me feel like crap. How can I make you feel better? Choose different, right. build that muscle and build that consistency. So I'm challenging our listeners, like ask yourself, create the self awareness. What is it in your day to day activity? Or maybe a couple times a week that you, what you're doing, you don't love. How do you love it more? 
change that perspective? How can you really focus on what you're getting out of it or how you're serving from it? How can you order Thai food with it or do it outside? Or how can you make it better? We all have stuff in our life that we got to do that we don't like. And until we figure out another way to do it, so hiring an assistant or changing something, enjoy it. Enjoy it. another tip for my athletes that listen or anyone that's kind of gearing to that. When I was in circus school, stretching my splits was torture because I didn't get a split until I was in my 20s. So I wasn't like my peers. They were all hyper flexible, like just younger, like all these other factors. And I was like, okay, I got to push through this. Like I can do this. I'm here for a reason. I can, you know, be my best flexible, but it took a lot of work. So I started singing Oh McDonald in my head while stretching a split to distract me. (laughs) And then I figured after three animals, you've been stretching for a minute. So I like to share that because it it's torture to stretch a split. It's like contractions when you're giving birth. That's the closest <laughs> thing to explaining that. Mm-hmm. Like when you're sp- stretching your split to beyond wherever you are. It, so even if you're hyper flexible and you put some blocks under, bam, they're immediately having contractions like they're about to give birth. It's so uncomfortable. So the fact that I had to sing in my head and I found a tool that helped me through something that's uncomfortable, but gets me where I need to be. Mm-hmm. And then it almost timed it and it became like a, like something I still do to this day. Yeah. No, I had a tool very similar to that where sometimes when I was cooking dinner, if anything that bothered me, I would sit there and ruminate on it. I would sit there cutting my potatoes, just kind of mindless, thinking about all of these things that went wrong. And just working myself up, like, you know how it is. The husband didn't take the trash out. He must really, like, disrespect and hate me. And it's like, that's not what's going on. And so I said, I thought singing Taylor Swift. And then I'm, like, jazzed up. I'm not making <laughs> the situation worse by, like, diving into this problem. That, and I love diving into a problem. But what I was doing was creating more problems. So, yeah, I love that. I do the same example. thing when I'm... <laughs> When I'm doing that, stop all cooking. I love that. I love that example. I totally agree. I could think of how, how many um, like dishes I could have broke from like, <laughs> yeah. or, oh, or like, yeah. I'm not. like if I'm watching my floor, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> that means I'm pissed. <laughs> like, leave me alone. Also, so important that we have these things to disconnect. I have a group on Facebook that's for anyone. It's called Mindset Mission. It's where I teach you, like, how can you really harness the power of your mindset one tool at a time, one tip at a time, one inspiration at a time. One of the things I asked this week was, what do you do when you know you need to do something? Like, what do you do when you know you need Mm. need a timeout? You need to remove yourself. Is it one, one person commented, go and isolate myself in nature? Love that. Another person commented, go visit the beach, right? Sand and uh, toes in the sand. We all have different things. Sometimes it's podcasts. Some of our listeners might be Islands and Unfolder Path podcasts. I freaking love that. How do you disconnect? Mm -hmm. We have to have our things. And here is what I would tell you. You have to have many things because you might not be close to the beach. You might not be able to go out and and go into nature. There's We have to have options. So I love Taylor Swift is yours. I freaking love that. Love that. Shake it off. Shake it off. I think I was like seven months <laughs> pregnant and I got to go to the Ares tour. And I was like, do you nice. still want to go? And I'm like, there's no way I'm not going. Okay. So I'm not. So someone's like, oh, are you a Swifty? I was like, like, like stop. And they're like, <laughs> this was like seven months ago. So I've, I've, I've fallen in love with her business aesthetic. Her parents are incredibly interested. I watched a podcast where they were just discussing her as a business entity. And I and this was like mm, a little bit after the Swifty comment. And so I so I've kind of like fallen for her as a businesswoman. Her I'm marketing her music her mar- is freaking genius. Yeah, her marketing is like on point. Like just everything that they're doing. For with me, her. Beyonce is like shady alignment because I I just feel like so I don't necessarily like so nobody's as big as that really except Taylor Swift but for me I think it was so thoughtful and intentional Mm, exactly um, how she built her brand absolutely her parents are really the backbone to that they come from one of I think it's the dad comes from finance Mm. so she was just 
set up to really like own her own stuff. And I think that's what's so inspiring. Yeah. Her business model is just brilliant. Um, I, think I saw a thing that you know, said that her, one of her, or her tour or whatever brought in enough revenue for like the entire um, US GDP or something like that. Uh, in I also one mean, she has a certain responsibility though. Yeah. I, that's well, one thing. Yeah. Like, I'll look so much yeah. into artists. But honestly, yeah. I follow no celebrities, including anybody on my media. Yeah. Zero. Graham, I'm interested. I, what makes her marketing so amazing? Yeah. Just like it, everything all all across the board and continuity through everything and like where she's basically just inundated everything. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I was watching a thing the other day that was just talking about for musician for a musician um, to do that level of marketing is just like, I mean, you can't go anywhere without here. Like Taylor Swift is just like Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. You know what I mean? Like that's the power of a personal brand. Yeah, it is. One you of the know, things I'm they said on the podcast was how, why they were celebrating her so much is she would go to all these fans and these letters and she would, she se sections out like a donate time of her life. And it's substantial. You guys, it's not just like mm. a, a weekend for press. We're talking things we don't even see. This is allotted time to give back. This woman does in a way that is the brilliant marketing. Oh, they're, yeah. they're marketing I mean, it for her because she's showing up to all these proms and birthdays ex and exactly. Beyonce, like, I like comparing them because you can see one that's like, mm, so like Beyonce will charge millions of dollars to go to Dubai to sing for someone's birthday. And you'll never see her at a regular person's birthday. You'll never even see her music in movies. She's mm -hmm. really that person. You can't even get a hold of her stuff. Well, you have a Taylor Swift that like does it for not even thinking for any type of return back it's so impressive. exactly it's um like so one of one of the things that i saw taylor swift do too was like all her truck drivers for her tour um or yeah like all the people who were the behind scene productions he gave them all like a ten thousand dollar bonus like hundred thousand or yeah something crazy like that Gosh. like hundred thousand dollars to each yeah. truck driver because it was yeah. like a brutal pace yeah and just like in like a gift bag and just like you know what i mean out of her own kind of personal stuff as like thank you you know what i mean and like that's the like that's the type of stuff like you were saying danielle it's like the regular people you know what i mean it's not like the the millionaires in dubai who are able mm -hmm. to afford her even though she would do that but it's like the regular people, because those are the people who are going to speak about it, who are going to speak about that word of mouth. And like, that's the type of marketing they like, if you can do your marketing where you're getting in the mouths of people and they're just sharing about it. Look, look at us right now. We're talking about this on a podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that is marketing. Like, You've intertwined it so much into your life that like people are talking about your brand like that. And I'm not is, even a Swifty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's the epitome of good marketing. If you can get to that point where like people are just talking about you because like it comes up in conversation because it relates to something or whatever, like, you know, that's the way to go. And what's so brilliant about her and why she has my respect because this sudden Swifty research based off of a joke, um, the longevity. People mm. can fake gen being generous. They mm. can fake personality. They can yep. fake being talented. Yeah. With a decade to 15 years of a career and this woman is still doing that. Like, it's just a beautiful thing to see. Like, I hope 10 years from now, I'm still donating at Art Walks in some form. Yeah. I hope I'm still, you know, raising money for rehabilitation centers. Like, I, I'm not trying to, like, say to grab attention, but I, I schedule that with intention. Yeah. Like, in the beginning, I'm like, okay, I'm going to give back. Where should I go with my time? Mm -hmm. I didn't do Portland Art Walk this year. I did, you know, a couple rogue rehabilitation kind of things so and then i did lewiston art walk so i don't know like i just really hope that no matter how successful i get 
or even this podcast, I really hope I keep the Taylor Swift in me. And I really <laughs> like give back and, you know, build my business with a, a similar um, integrity. And that's the brand that like everything I learned about social media and marketing and getting our messages out there and reels and everything is from Graham, literally every single ounce of it, value productions, show out if you want to learn anything about that. Mm -hmm. Right. But here's what I would say is like, Brianna, you have a beautiful message of your brand. Your brand is you are passionate about individuals who are disabled and getting the healthcare that they need. You are passionate about entrepreneurs and empowering them to go be entrepreneurs because we have a calling. It is our, we, we have to serve. We have to, like we have a calling. It is our obligation to go serve. So you help them figure out how to do that. You help people realize that they don't have to wait till that magic number to retire. Yeah, that is your brand. And in the meantime, you are momming it. You are figuring out like, how do I pump car driving three hours and not spill it all over me and actually bring every little ounce of that liquid gold home? Oh my like, God, that is like the greatest story ever. I need to do that. That is your brand. And all of us have to, if you if you look at all of this, like Taylor Swift, Graham, Danielle, Brianna, me, like all of it, it all takes vulnerability to be real, to say that we are real normal humans. We go through shit and we're here to say we're real normals normal humans and this is what we're going through and this is how we're growing this is how we're evolving follow us as inspiration because that's what the world needs the world does not need fake people to make everything look perfect and easy because it's not that's not how we grow perfect and easy is not how we grow and so we gotta go through the crap in order to grow and actually become who we are so brand yourself shout it from the rooftops be your own you confidently, vulnerably, and use the power of social media. Listen, we are in a really amazing era that we can literally shout this message from so many platforms. Mm -hmm. it's it's really it's just about being genuine. Yeah. Like that's the I know. Piece. I just spent a little bit of that time. She was um, clarifying what we've talked about like who in my life that I can refer you to immediately because it's just like, it's so crazy to me how many people I actually do know that like slow down or, or their husbands. Cause I'm so glad you brought that up and it was really in your story. And I love how you already love your husband enough to be thinking, Oh my God, he's four years behind me. I just, the, all of it was very heartwarming, but I see that my stepdad will only make or do so much with his construction business because they have to maintain insurance for my mom who has had health problems for like 20 years. So like, it's like a chase at this point just to stay alive for her. So um, I just, I just feel so inspired to share your story and whether you can help people directly or not, um, right away, or even having a goal or seeing it possible. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I just love this. Um, I can't wait to promote you in my brain. I already started stacking a list. <laughs> so yeah, like, I'm seeing your current healthcare. I got a call yesterday. Someone's like, hi, so I have Martin's point. I love them, but I, I, I need, what was it? I need, I need dental. I'm like, you have dental already in your plan. Here's how it works. Let me send you the thing. And like, I exactly. work with all of the different companies in the state. So I know them. I see them. And there's also, I don't also want to point out, there's no cost to working with me. Like I get paid by all the different companies. So there's, I'm just a free resource to people with the current plan. It's, it's the best job on the planet because <laughs> I just get to help people like here, you have dental. I had a client who hadn't been to a dentist in 20 years. And so think of your quality of life. If your teeth in retirement aren't good, like she wasn't able to go out and get and order the steak at a restaurant, like those things mm -hmm. that the quality of life in retirement and just life in general are what I love to support people with. And it, it's all about just genuinely caring about people around you, which is what you guys do as well. And just wanting to help the community. And that's why yeah. amazing people like you on our podcast, Brianna, thank you so much for blessing us uh, with your presence. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all that you do for everyone. You know, you really are so unique and such a blessing to everyone. So thank you. Yeah. Thank I you think that you. I think that kind of sums up like everything that we've done on this episode today. It's just like you know, the in like what you were saying, Danielle, the inspiration and that like it's possible and just have a conversation, you know, and see that, 
you know, maybe something can change. And, and hopefully this podcast is a catalyst in, in making that happen and seeing all the options that are out there. So again, Brianna, I appreciate you coming on to the podcast, helping our listeners out. And uh, again, my name is Graham, uh, owner of Valued Productions. You can find me online, valuedproductions.com. That's V-A-L-U-D Productions. Same with social media at Valued Productions. Um, joined with my awesome co-host today. Hey everyone, Trinity Baker, Mindset Coach. And if you're looking for help on how to get out of your head, take the next steps to get unstuck, whatever it looks like for you, right? Survival mode. You can find me on my website, thetrinitybaker.com. I got lots of free resources on there. You can start on your mindset journey today. Trinity Baker, Mindset Coach. I'm joined here with my co-host. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle. I'm the owner of Ariel Jade. I am an aerialist. Uh, I'm also a teacher. So if you're interested in learning circus arts, you can definitely reach out to me or follow me on media for tips. Um, I have such inspiring students I like to share and I share it from a mother's point of view. So if that's your thing, please follow me on Ariel Jade on all forms of media. You might have to add art on a couple, but that's just what it is. I love this podcast because we went from healthcare to marketing to breastfeeding and I'm just so pleased. Um, <laughs> so we are here with our wonderful visitor. Hey everyone, thanks so much. My, again, my name is Brianna Henward. My company is Tinden Associates. You can find us on tindenassociates.com or you can find me on social media, Facebook or TikTok at Brianna Henward, Health and Medicare Advisor. Let me help you truly understand your healthcare so you can navigate it in this broken healthcare system. Your insurance doesn't have to be broken. Awesome. I love it. And thank you to all our listeners for tuning in today. We'll see you all next time on the Unfiltered Path podcast.